Today on Breaking Down a Guitar Legend, we'll be discussing Alexi Leo. It took literal seconds for me to pick who I wanted to cover as the first video for my Breaking Down a Guitar Legend series. This is because without Alexi Leo, I wouldn't even be here making guitar related content. I went from casually learning how to play guitar by learning popular pop punk songs and the generic riffs that everyone uses to learn how to play guitar to becoming obsessed with wanting to become a metal guitarist and all started from this one guitar lesson. Wait, no, not that. This guitar lesson. I can't even explain to you how much this guitar wear lesson blew my mind. This riff, which is from Choco Cocked and Loaded, is a classic example of Alexi's signature style. The use of fast palmita open picking with an array of power chords and some artificial harmonics sprinkled in is something that you've seen us playing a lot, but at the time, something I had never heard before. This riff, mixed with the Lexi style, mixed with its incredible looking yellow and black ESP signature, had me hooked. I became a fan of Bodum and more extreme metal by just hearing one riff. As the years went on and I dove deeper into Bodum's discography, my appreciation for Alexi and the band grew. This carried over to my friends as well. My friend Ian still has his Alexi Signature Model LTD to this day. So with a little background on my introduction to Alexi and Bodum, let's take a look at Alexi's early life and what influenced him as a guitar player. Alexi was born April 8, 1979 in Espoo, Finland. Growing up, he had a great family life and enjoyed activities like skateboarding, skiing, and watching Batman. It did not take long for him to show signs of interest in music as his father played keyboard in a band called The Beggars and his mother was a classically trained musician who played the piano and keyboard. Just like his older sister, who had a huge impact on his musical interests, Alexi was put in piano lessons at the age of 5 and also took up the violin until the age of 11 or 12, where he studied classical musicians such as Mozart and Vivaldi. Here's a clip that I probably watched and practiced over 100,000 times in my life. It's a clip of Alexi playing Vivaldi's Four Seasons, where we could see some of his early classical influence later on in life. I absolutely love this video. In fact, I used to love it so much that I put it on my MySpace profile, for those that remember MySpace. But back to his early life. It was around the time that he was 11 or 12 that his father gave him his first guitar, which was a Tokai Stratocaster. With the guitar finally in hand, he started getting influenced by bands like Slayer, Suicidal Tendencies, and Wasp, and also guitar players like Zach Wilde and Steve Vai. As he progressed as a player, his schoolwork started to fall by the wayside, and he eventually dropped out to practice his craft full time. This led him to start a band named In Earth. In Earth would have some influence in the local scene, and even sign a contract with the Belgian label. Alexi said the contract was quote, the shittiest contract ever. And right around this time, they were also getting interest from bigger labels like Spine Farm Records, who offered them a better contract. In order to get out of their original contract with the Belgian label, they told them that the band broke up and they were unable to continue working with them. Now that the In Earth name was retired, they reformed with their new name, Children of Bodom. In 1997, Children of Bodom released their debut album, Something Wild. This album had great reviews pretty much right away, and I can see why. I was only 7 at the time, but I can just imagine how crazy it must have been to hear this album when it came out. Bodum has such a distinctive sound with Alexi's voice, guitar playing, and the killer keyboard parts. Red Light in My Eyes Part 1 and Lake Bodum are a couple of the standout songs for me. The intro to Lake Bodum has the perfect balance of being technical while also being catchy. Despite the early success with the band, Alexi would struggle with alcohol, pills, and depression. His nickname was The Wild Child and he definitely lived up to the name. Partying hard was a big part of Bodum. I could actually make a whole video on Bodum getting hammered. In fact, go check out the documentary Chaos Ridden Years. There's a lot of that, but also some great clips of the band in there. Even with the hard partying, Bodum would continue to put out 10 studio albums and tour all over the world. If you're not familiar with their discography, I would highly recommend checking out Hate Crew Death Roll, Hate Breeder, and Are You Dead Yet? And that's just some of my favorite albums, but they're all solid. Even their last album, Hex, which came out 22 years after Something's Wild, is an excellent, excellent record. It's so rare that a band can continue to make great albums for that many years. Since this is a guitar focused channel, I wanna go over some of the techniques that made Alexi such a special player. Although he didn't invent any of these techniques, he used them in unique ways that gave him his signature sound. 
For example, Alexi was a big proponent of pentatonic scales and using vicious vibrato in his bends, like in this lick. He also incorporated the whammy bar a lot in his playing, like in this example. Alexi also loves sweeping arpeggios and throwing in some taps, like this. It's also not a Bodum song without catchy harmonies. In addition to his lead techniques, he also used a lot of the same rhythm techniques in his songs. This clip shows how he would use fast palm muted notes mixed with rhythmic open notes on the lower strings. Alexi also used a lot of power chords and rang out a lot of notes to add some more dynamics to his riffs. Lastly, something that we see in Alexi's playing a lot is fast down pick riffs with octaves being thrown in. God, I love that riff. Now let's take a look at some of the guitars that he's played over the years. Early on, Alexi played Jackson guitars. We see him playing this black Randy Rhodes V with the yellow pinstripes primarily, but he also played a solid black one. And you can see that guitar in a few of the videos within this video. This black and yellow Jackson is such a cool looking guitar. Really, the Jackson Randy Rhodes in general are some of my favorite guitars visually speaking. We can even see that he eventually added the Wild Child sticker to this guitar. It's my understanding that the reason he stopped playing Jackson is that his Jacksons were stolen and he needed one quickly but Jackson was just getting bought out by Fender and they were unable to complete one in time. I think they said it was gonna take like a year for them to build one. When ESP heard this, they told him that they could make a guitar within a few months and this is where we start seeing his first signature guitar with ESP. This is the Alexi RV 350 AL. This clip was taken from a 2003 Young Guitar Magazine when it was first introduced to the world. I won't say this guitar is better than the Jackson because I love both guitars, but this thing is absolutely incredible. I'm not one to play signature guitars, but I would love to have one of these in my collection, and hopefully one day I will. Over the years, ESP has released many different versions of this guitar, including Edwards, LTD, and E2. Not only that, there are tons of color combinations. Some of the more notable ones are the pink ones with the sawtooth inlays. They have a white one, and a white one with one of my favorite inlays of all time, the Grim Reaper Scythe. This cool green one with a skull on it, and ESP even released these purple ones, which are absolutely gorgeous guitars. It seems as though ESP is gonna to continue to release these models, and I'm all for it. I love seeing the different color combinations that they come out with. I'd have to imagine they're still selling a lot of these too, because Alexi has tons of fans. Speaking of Alexi's fans, as most of you know, Alexi passed away on December 29th, 2020, due to health complications from all the years of living like the guitar legend that he was. It's so unfortunate, and I wish you could've got the help that he needed, I would have loved to see him in his 70s playing the 250th incarnation of his signature model and I know I'm not the only one who feels that way. There was a huge amount of support in the metal community and people really came together to share their love and appreciation for Alexi. I never really get invested with celebrity deaths but his death really upset me. I can't even count the amount of great memories that I have that revolved around his music and guitar playing. He would be an influence of mine for the rest of my life. The whole time I made this video and watched clips of him, I felt like stopping so that I could pick up my guitar and start playing his riffs and licks. I was able to stay focused though, so that I could make this video as a tribute to him and for all of his fans out there who were influenced by him just like me. With all that said, rest in peace Alexi. I plan on continuing to do this Breaking Down a Guitar Legend series. Please subscribe and share this video and let me know if there's any other guitars you'd like me to cover in the future. Until then, Keep on shredding.